I watched the Miles Davis documentary the other day that's on um, BBC iPlayer I recommend you check it out if you haven't already um, fascinating 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 documentary uh, I've got it up here on the screen let me put just a point image actually about what I saw here let me get it up here boom yeah so just may put an image of you know the old Miles Davis on it but yeah um, a fascinating documentary by and by um, I think a lot of interesting points I have to kind of point out regarding it that I kind of read down here for you. Do, do, do. Um, so it's an interesting documentary about you know Miles Davis, legendary jazz musician. Essentially, it's a collection of uh, short interviews and kind of you know talking head point. No, short interviews with people that are nearest and dearest to him, ex wives and girlfriends and lovers and collaborators and muses just a whole bevy of people that kind of span his whole you know entire life you kind of lend their voice to the documentary and it's done in a very very tasteful way there's even parts of it where he sorts of he kind of narrates it himself i'm not sure if they're clips for the actual documentary or if it was clips that they kind of found um you know through basically archive footage and everything he clipped it together but it sort of reminds me a little bit of the Mike Tyson documentary where that you know he sort of like narrates his story throughout but other people sort of chip it no Mike Tyson is just him narrating it throughout but this one is sort of him narrating it in bits and other people adding in some fillers so I thought that was really really illuminating in terms of a documentary um and then there was um, of course you get to see his taste in women was impeccable I think all three of the ladies that were featured there who are kind of a couple of ex-wives and one lover I think um, but obviously the standout was Francis um, it was so awesome to just see the importance he placed in having a partner next to him that was both a, you know an incredible lover um, was able to be somebody he could be his rock emotionally and also an inspiration in terms of the art he was doing um, and how he was creating um, they all served as muses in different sort of ways they all kind of were pivotable pivotal pivotal features people in his life right moments they kind of you know added a lot to him and if you read the actual book that I've got I think it's somewhere in my book I'm not sure if it's here maybe it's over there but in his actual book, the autobiography of Miles Davis, definitely recommend you check it out. It'll get up on your screen so you can see it. But he's got an autobiography, Miles Davis, autobiography. And in the autobiography, he does mention often that he that's the one part, I think, of his life that he regrets, you know, being a bit of a shitty dad and being, you know, a bit of a terrible husband and boyfriend to his partners. He mentions that quite often. Um of, and thinking about it it kind of reminded me a little bit of the Jordan documentary Last Dance right his relentless pursuit for you know um, perfection in sports you know his relentless pursuit for excellence and for greatness and you know ultimately to win trophies um, individual accolades and team accolades maybe was um, maybe did have some neg negative effects of his personal relationships with people on and off the court, right? Whether it's family members or teammates, you saw sort of saw that throughout the entire documentary, right? It's it's to a fault, but people were willing to accept it because he was just so great in this other domain, right? When it came to kind of you know playing basketball on the biggest stage under the bright lights, when it really mattered, he was the guy you wanted to go to. He was what Americans refer to as clutch, right? He was the guy that you wanted. The, buzzer you know seconds on a buzzer and you need one you need three points to win a championship you give the ball to Jordan and he's going to do what he's going to do so Miles Davis probably had a bit of that too right he's always been referred to as, as a musical savant he was you know what leading an orchestra when he was like fucking 14 15 years of age like always kind of you know seen as a bit of a um a special talent in that regard so having that level of gift given to you and artistry and talent and ability at that young age and that kind of single-minded pursuit of knowing exactly where you're going and how you're going to do it is definitely going to affect other parts of your life it's just impossible to be well-rounded only that person it seems like when you look at some of the autobiographies of people who operate on that level of greatness it's just really difficult to kind of have all your you know to kind of have everything in in perfect balance if that's even a thing it's just hard to do some things have to fall by the wayside and you kind of saw that featured in a documentary and you definitely see that featured in the book i recommend check out the book probably read the book first if you can um but if you if not then definitely check out the documentary it's only like an hour and a half no it's actually two hours but it's really enjoyable it doesn't matter check it out you've got no, nothing else to do anyways obviously during lockdown um 
and another point in it i mentioned here um it's a cautionary tale of how drugs and alcohol can ruin a career in the arts and that is true in the in every case right from the keith richards book i have here stephen tyler autobiography book that i've read um anyone involved in the in the arts entertainment industry anytime they went through any kind of hardship where they had to resort to drugs and alcohol in order to kind of numb the pain in order to make you know the pain go away to sort of like you know um make the days go by quickly it inevitably led to a moment where it was really hard to sort of like wean yourself off of it especially when you've been operating at such a high frequency because like anything in life i think the you know just trying to get your foot in the door trying to get started is really difficult in anything you do especially in the arts right because there's no real clear path to anything to become a pop star to become the next ariana grande or to become an next big dj there is no real clear path like you do this 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 it's all you know it's a bit of a it's a bit of a snake it's a bit you know up and down everyone's got a different journey um so with that comes this idea that once you've st- finally got some momentum stuff does become big stuff gets really easy once you get your foot in the door it becomes a little bit easier to kind of navigate opportunities kind of present themselves to you most of the people say it you say that all the time right it's not necessarily about how hard you work once you get there it's about the work you do at the beginning right it's like kind of like grinding 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 on the underground and then you get given the opportunity because someone called in sick and all this stuff happens and then suddenly now all that work you've done when no one was noticing it's going to be important now because when people notice they've got a reference of the material you've done previously you've obviously got like a uh, you know you've been operating that level for a while so it would only be it would only make sense once you get to that level that you know you'd be indulged somewhat you know because you've kind of you know you've shown improved and also you know you can get away with it because you've done it before you've done it at a lower level you know turning stuff in late or just you know whatever just getting on it being high drinking a lot and it's been okay for you at that low level so when you get high level and you've got kind of assistance and you've got teams around you it only makes sense that what's a bit of free time that you can maybe dabble you know in some extracurricular activities but unfortunately when it comes to achieving great things or being great at your craft it just doesn't mix there's no one that exists out there i don't think so from what i've read and i've read a lot extensively about people who have been successful in the entertainment industry or in the you know in music um in design in fashion in in contemporary art it, it doesn't exist a person who's able to operate on that level of frequency um do great work and also have you know these uncontrollable vices especially when it comes to drugs and alcohol just you know and just indulge in it willy-nilly as long as they want it's just not a thing you might be you know there might be an occasion where you, you you know you win a big prize you secure a sponsorship you get a new contract whatever it may be and you celebrate cool but consistently getting out getting on it when you're trying to pursue a really lofty goal it's just no bueno it's just not going to happen it's just not going to work and usually it kind of blows up in your face somewhere or the other whether it's you know you know, everyone finding out about Tiger Woods, you know, hordes of, you know, Swedish models getting unloaded off a, off a coach somewhere, whatever stuff that happens privately behind the scenes you don't hear about with certain celebrities, it never ever goes unnoticed. It's definitely going to come and bite in the ass. And you saw it with, you know, with essentially Miles Davis, you know, with his excessive, I guess you'd say in that area was different, but, you know, he smoked a lot, drank a lot. He had an ulcer that needs, a non cancerous ulcer that needs to be removed from his um, throat, I'm pretty sure, which affected his voice, which completely changed how he sounded. He had sort of had this raspy voice that he never had before, uh, more, well, more raspy than maybe what it had been. His excessive use of heroin and cocaine probably affected his respiratory issues, which then affected him, you know, being able to play the trumpet later on in life which then led to him essentially dying of a heart attack you know all these things led to it but um a part of me also was like thinking watching it you know what he did live a life worth living even though you know he did succumb to you know the effects of maybe getting um a bit too happy with the party drugs um uh, in his life or whenever he had like a bad moment because you also have to remember you watch a documentary every every time each time he had a bit of a stumbling block and he kind of came out of it from the other side he sort of came out of from a you know a binge and sort of tried to get his life together it was when some of his best work well some of his best work was created so there's a kind of a give and take in that regard especially when you're high operating on that level of frequency but there's also this idea that maybe 
these incredibly talented and gifted people who are kind of like you know uh provided to us as sources of kind of um fun inspiration and maybe motivation they're sort of a bit of a cautionary tale for us and maybe for themselves maybe um whoever kind of gives them the gifts whether you believe in a you know a, a higher power or it's god or whatever it may be whoever creates these people sorts of gives them these sort of flaws so that they can keep their ego in check themselves and that it gives us a cautionary tale as to hey this person might be perfect in some regards but there are some faults in their character there are some things that you can learn from that you can sh that you shouldn't be copying when it comes to your future and the stuff that you do maybe there's something in that i think because it's a common thread you see with and loads of musicians with loads of people in the arts and entertainment industry it's just you know they just have that kind of self-destructive streak in them where they can kind of just really implode on themselves you know at any moment and everyone just has to be along with a ride and just kind of hold on tight because that's part of their genius right you notice that straight away with watching the miles davis documentary um a fascinating fascinating documentary i really recommend you check it out it's on iplayer now if you're in the uk but i'm sure if you are outside the uk you'll be able to find it um if you do a bit of digging but yeah definitely one of my um favorite documentaries i've watched in a long long time and like uh, amazingly done who's a director by so here's yeah miles davis the birth of the call um it's directed by stanley nelson jr really really well done um only people that were you know directly involved with him speak on the issue no kind of like fluffy people are involved in it um a really done well you've all done piece like loads of unseen pictures that you haven't checked you haven't seen before of his especially if you read the autobiography you know there's loads of pictures in that autobiography book that i've actually got um this one here so if you've read that book don't think you've seen all the pictures of Miles davis loads of our nerf ones are going to be in this documentary as well um birth of the core so yeah check it out if you haven't already really really good viewing for your little inspiration boost